Hello my dear children, how are you? Hope you all are safe at home. In the previous class, we have started our second chapter. Hope you all have studied everything. Let's now learn more about water. We have already studied what is a solute, a solvent and a solution. Can you complete this table now? Here, what is the solute in sugar solution? Yes, you are right. Sugar is the solute in sugar solution and water is the solvent. In salt solution, salt is the solute, then what is its solvent? Of course you are right. Salt dissolves in water to make salt solution. So solvent is water. Next one is the soda water. What is the solute and solvent in soda water? Let's find out this now. Haven't you seen gas bubbles rising up while opening a soda bottle? It is the carbon dioxide dissolved in water that comes up in the form of bubbles. So can't you now tell what is the solute and solvent in soda water? Yes, the solute in soda water is carbon dioxide and solvent is water. You have already seen in the previous class that Potassium permanganate is mixed with water to get potassium permanganate solution. So, here solute is potassium permanganate and solvent is water. Just like this, copper sulfate is a solute in copper sulfate solution and the solvent is water. Children, complete this table in your textbook using pencil. Okay? There is an another activity for you. In this table, they have given some solvents like water, coconut oil and kerosene. We need to check whether these solutes that is sugar, salt, blue vitriol, jaggery, sugar candy and potassium permanganate is soluble in these solvents. We have already seen in the previous activities that sugar, salt, blue vitriol, Sugar candy and potassium permanganate are soluble in water. We know that jaggery is also soluble in water. Look, all these solutes are soluble in water. Dear children, you must check the solubility of these solutes in coconut oil and kerosene at home. Okay? Mark your findings in your textbook using pencil. From all these activities, we can conclude that water is a solvent which dissolves a large number of substances. Hence, water is called the universal solvent. Once again, why water is called the universal solvent? Water is a solvent which dissolves a large number of substances. Hence, it is called the universal solvent. Let's discuss some other properties of water. For this, we can do an experiment. Make an arrangement as shown in this video. You may use cups or bottles of same size and join it with straw or mason pipe from the base of each cup as shown here. Make sure that there is no leakage in both the cups at this portion. Add colored water to fill one cup completely. What do you observe? Yes, the water levels are same in both cups. So, this means water maintains its level. This is why when groundwater is collected in large quantities for industrial and commercial purposes, it results in the depletion of water level. This leads to the fall of water level in wells and ponds in the neighborhood. Now, let's move on to another property of water. Have you ever seen a piece of food floats on water? Do all substances float on water like this? You have studied in the previous classes that plantain stem, wooden pencil, thermocol, plastic toys, etc. will floats on water. While 
objects like stone, metal spoon, paper clip, etc. will sink in water. You must find more and more examples of objects that float and sink in water and expand the table in your textbook. You have now understood that several objects float on water. How you came across any instance in which we make use of this property of water? Two situations that we use this property of water is given in your textbook. First point, learning to swim holding on to a plantain stem. Second point, carrying articles on a raft. Two more points you may write here using pencil as life jackets used for boating. Second one, learning to swim holding on a air filled tube etc. Ok, dear children, now let's move on to the next activity. Water is a liquid, no? Then, how can we measure water? Can you measure like this, that we measure vegetables or fruits etc? No, we use measuring jars for this purpose. Let's study how to make a model of 1 liter measuring vessel. For this, you need to cut out the chart paper as shown in your textbook. Each squares must be of 10 cm side. Then, this is an extra portion for folding. Then fold it like this in this video. The 1 liter vessel model is ready. Children, make this model at home and keep it with you. Submit it after school reopening. Okay. We also use bottles and vessels of different capacities every day. Using these bottles, we can measure half liter, one liter, two liter and five liter etc. of water. Can you measure sea water using these measuring jars? No, isn't it? Haven't you seen a globe? The blue color in globe shows water bodies. Most of the portion of the earth is ocean. Two third of the surface area of the earth is water, which is double the area of land. You know that the amount of salt in sea water is high. Hence, it cannot be used for common purposes. It is a water from pure water sources such as wells, ponds, lakes and rivers that we can use. The quantity as well as the quality of water in our pure water sources is depleted to a great extent nowadays. Natural water bodies are getting polluted. Let's check which are the ways by which water gets polluted. Washing vehicles and bathing cattle in the river, throwing plastic wastes into water sources, dumping waste materials from fish and meat markets, dumping waste from factories, spraying pesticides in agricultural fields, etc. How can we prevent water pollution? Don't do all these things we have seen, isn't it? And don't allow anybody to do this, ok? We can be taken steps to avoid water pollution in our houses as build compound wall around well and cover the well by using a net. Avoid bathing, brushing, washing, clothes, etc. near the wells. Don't make cow shed, septic tank, etc. near wells. Then another question. When do our water bodies become abundant in water? Yes, you are right. In the rainy season, our water bodies will become abundant in water. Then have you ever think how is rain formed? Let's study this in detail. When sun shines above water, heat comes from it, boils the water. It turns water into water vapor. This process of changing of water into a gas is called a evaporation. Before gases are lighter than liquids, water vapor rises up into the sky. 
once the water vapor reaches high in the sky the colder the temperature gets they condense and form clouds so what is condensation the conversion of a vapor or gas into liquid this process is called a condensation so when condensation occurs into the sky clouds form and grows now wind takes the cloud from one place to other let's take it closer look when water droplets bump into one another they stick together and grow in size they continue to grow and forms bigger drops when they are too heavy they can't stay there due to gravity they fall down this process continues and fall astray most of the rainwater sink into ground and stay as groundwater and some rainwater flows towards the river and lakes etc water from the rivers and lakes flows towards the sea again the process restarts and it is called a water cycle so now you know how rain is formed and what is water cycle isn't it now let's summarize what we have learned today as first point universal solvent second one properties of water third one water pollution and last one water cycle or how is rain formed okay children we shall meet on next class thank you